I basically have to take out the engine mounts and the transmission mounts, and then this thing is ready to be pulled. Why am I looking over there? All right, so today's mission is to get this 5.3 liter LM7 into that RX-7. And I know what you're all thinking, that's not an LS1. You're right. This is my 1987 Mazda RX-7. The engine I'm removing is an LS6 that I'll use in a different project. The new parts I'm installing with the LM7 are a new power steering pump, a 102 millimeter throttle body, an ECU with vats removed and base tune, spark plug wires and protectors, 30 pound injectors, spark plugs, gaskets and knock sensors, front crank bolt, front and rear main seal, flywheel, pressure plate and clutch, throw out bearing, fuel rails, fittings and hardware, and an aluminum intake manifold. Drain all engine and transmission fluids before you begin. First I remove the exhaust, then I disconnect the wiring harness on both sides of the engine. remove the dipstick. Followed by removing the headers. I remove the front bumper, then I remove the headlight hood pin bracket. Remove the bash bar. I remove the coolant tubes. and disconnect the fan wiring and coolant temp sensor. I remove the power steering cooler lines and the oil cooler lines. Now I'm able to unbolt and remove the tube front. I disconnect the steam port and remove the wiring from the starter. Disconnect the crank sensor. Replace the hardware on the starter. I pull the MAP sensor line and the brake booster line. I unbolt the 6AN fuel line. Mm. 
and unbolt the rusty, rusty ground. Now I disconnect the knock sensors. I loosen the fuel rails and unbolt the intake manifold. I remove the vent line from the rocker cover. And the oil catch can lines from the manifold. Now I can lift the manifold off the heads. From here, I disconnect the cam sensor and oil pressure sensor. Then I remove the coil packs and brackets. Disconnect the power steering line from the pump. and unbolt all the connectors on the transmission. Remove the clutch line. Unbolt the drive shaft from the differential and slide it out of the transmission. Unbolt the shifter in the car. and support the transmission with a jack stand. All right, now that we've disconnected everything imaginable, I just have to take out the motor mounts and the transmission mounts and this thing will be ready to pull. Unbolt the transmission mount under the car. Remove the through bolt on each motor mount. I wrap a nylon strap around the driver's side engine bracket and secure it on the passenger side with a carabiner. Now it's time to grab the engine hoist and lift it out. I like to put engines and transmissions down on two tires. Unbolt the transmission. Use a jack to get to the bottom bolts. Now pry and wiggle the T56 off the motor. Lift the motor back up and remove the pressure plate, clutch, and flywheel. Be sure to drop the clutch like an idiot. Remove the starter. Now attach the arms for the engine stand and slide the engine stand onto the adapter. All right, now that I've got both motors set up on engine stands, I'm gonna swap all the accessories from this one to this one, with one exception. Uh, this power steering pump is blown, so I'm gonna replace that with a new one. A hole must be drilled and tapped to mount car accessories on a truck motor. I use this template to make sure the hole is in the right place. Now expand the pilot hole and tap to M10 by 1.5. Unbolt the alternator and bracket.
Now, I move the alternator and bracket to the LM7. Remove the water pump and spill gross water all over yourself. Clean the mating surface, then bolt the pump to the LM7 with new gaskets. The power steering pump pulley requires a special puller tool. I rented this one. I remove the blown power steering pump and its bracket. Now I swap the brackets over to the LM7 and bolt in the new power steering pump. I put the adapter fitting in the pump and put the old pulley back on. Remove the old knock sensors, valley cover, and gasket. Clean the mating surfaces, then hammer new seals into the valley cover and mount with the new gasket and provided hardware. Bolt in the new knock sensors and plug in their sub harness. Turn both motors over. Remove the oil pans from both motors. Swap the windage tray and oil pickup. Then clean the oil pan mating surface. We will stare at views we can't we Add a dab of RTV in each corner of the motor. Put on the new gasket and the freshly cleaned oil pan. Torque all the hardware to two Dakadakas on the Dewalt. Use every available technique to get the harmonic balancer on the new motor. Torque the crank bolt to spec. I made a bracket to hold the crank in place. Now I throw the belt back on and tighten the slide tensioner. Rotate the motor and make sure everything is moving smoothly. Put the engine brackets on. Attach the power steering line. Bolt on the starter. 
Remove the coils and bracket. Hoist the LM7 and slide off the engine stand. Remove the stand adapter. Install the new pilot bushing. Clean the flywheel with brake clean. And install the flywheel with red Loctite on the bolts. I reinstall my bracket and torque the bolts to spec. Reclean the flywheel. Grease the pilot bushing and mount the clutch with the alignment tool. Clean the pressure plate with brake clean and install it with red Loctite. Torque the pressure plate bolts to spec. Wiggle the transmission for 5 to 90 minutes to align it with the motor. And then tighten the bell housing bolts. Now I drop the engine and trans into the chassis and bolt in the motor mounts. Bolt in that rusty, rusty ground. Install the coils and brackets. Discover your throttle body is bigger than your intake manifold. Use a marker and a pick to make a scribe line on the manifold. And then I ported the manifold with a mini belt sander. Now I'll clean and vacuum the dust out. And it fits. Apply Teflon tape and install the vacuum fittings and the map sensor. Install the idle air control valve and the throttle position sensor. A little contact adhesive holds the gaskets in place. Now drop that great looking manifold on the motor. Tape and assemble the fuel rails. Now 
Lubricate the seals and install the injectors. Now plop the rails on the injectors. Reinstall the 6AN fuel line. Install the front fuel crossover tube. Reinstall the wiring harness, including the starter. Install the headers, dipstick, spark plugs, and spark plug wires with insulators. Reinstall the tube front. Slip on the coolant tubes and tighten down the radiator. Slip on the water overflow hose. Reinstall the power steering cooler and oil cooler lines. Cap all the random open ports in the manifold. Then run a new brake booster line. The port in the manifold is much larger than the factory Mazda one. So I made a little spacer and lubed it up to slip on the new hose. Unplug the blue and red connectors from the PCM. Unbolt and remove the PCM. Now slide in the new PCM with a tune for the LM7. Bolt it in and plug in the connectors. Put a new oil filter on the relocation pedestal. Then fill the engine with 5W30. Then fill the power steering reservoir with ATF. Now put some 93 octane fuel in it. Crank it over a few times with the fuel pumps off to build some oil pressure. Idle is very high due to a garbage eBay throttle body. Since the exhaust pipes are out, replace the O2 sensors. 
Remember to anti-seize the new ones. Fill the T56 with Dextron 3 ATF. Put on a bead of silicone to seal the shifter. Now install the shifter. Bolt on the shift lever and the shift boot. Reinstall the headlight hood pin bracket. Reinstall the bash bar. And reinstall the front bumper. Alright, so there were a couple things that got done after the swap that were not filmed. Uh, the first one is sensors. The motor was running like absolute garbage and I replaced all the uh, engine sensors except for the MAF and the MAP. Other than that, I replaced everything and then the car ran tip top. Number two is the throttle body. That throttle body was so terrible. I bought it off eBay, it was super cheap, and it was so crappy that the actual butterfly itself was bending under engine vacuum. And that just made it run incredibly bad. The idle was super high. I replaced it with the throttle body from the old LS6, and then it ran fine. It fixed the idle problem completely. The third one was the uh, 90 degree 6AN fuel line that is uh, on the back of the motor, uh, the one that goes right to the rail. That got crushed against the firewall at some point. So I replaced that. Uh, more of, it wasn't leaking or anything, it was more of just a good maintenance kind of thing. And uh, then the car ran excellent after those three things. So that concludes the swap. Thanks for watching. RX7 corner here. Mush them together, make an RX14.